Welcome to the Secret Sauce of Outsourcing podcast that's dedicated to making you better at outsourcing to the Philippines. This is episode 120, what good training can do for you and for your OFS. We ride bikes a lot and I talk about it on this podcast a lot and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more today. So last weekend I spent in Arkansas with my daughter for a bike race. And now this bike race is a national bike race. In fact, it was an international bike race. There were people from all over the US there. There were people from Canada, people from Mexico, a couple other countries there because it was a UCI race. A UCI is like the governing, the international governing body of cycling. And it was an important race because it was a lead up race to get points for the national championships, which will happen in July. And so when they line people up at a race, you, there, there's going to be, you know, like 50 or 60 people in the race for the girls or for the boys, it's over 100 people in the race. And you line people up and you go four wide or six wide. And then if you have 60 people, that means you got like 10 or 12 or 15 rows of people. And then the course isn't super wide. And so passing becomes difficult. And so if you're lined up in the 10th row, you can't win the race. It's 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 really, really hard if you're that far back. And so this this race was a big deal. It was super well done. I had people kept telling, kept sending me pictures of my daughter Addie on the big screen that they had at the start line with like the rank order because she was doing so well. So she started 32nd, which they lined them up eight wide. And that was, so that's on the fourth row, the last person on the fourth row. And then when you get eight wide and then it converges and converges, you just get pushed and squeezed backwards, right? But she's fast. And so after the first lap, she was like 22nd place, which means she had moved up a bunch. And then after lap two, she was in like 18th, I think. And then she started moving up. So lap three, she's in like seventh. And then lap four, she's in sixth. And she ends up finishing fifth place. And it was really fun because... Every time I'd see her, which I could see her at three different points in the lap because they'd go out and come back and go out and come back and I could see her at these back points. She's she's moving up, she's passing people and I can tell her like, hey, I just saw sixth place in front of you and they're hurting, so go catch them, which she did. And so here's, here's the critical piece off of this. Addie trains really hard. She rides her bike every day. She's had weeks of like 12 hours, 15 hours, 17 hours on the bike, you know, in a week. And so her, all of this training so far has been like pretty low intensity for her. She's had very little high intensity where you're sprinting or you're, you're working your anaerobic capacity. A lot of the other girls have done a lot of high intensity training. And so Addie is not very fast starting the race right now, but she, her endurance is really, really good. So she can keep up her speed for a really long time. And so that's why she's catching and passing girls who have done some high intensity work and maybe their low intensity work wasn't enough. Their, their training didn't, their base training of your aerobic capacity is really important to maintain your anaerobic capacity. Eh, obviously I'm getting technical in here in bike training, which is not super interesting to you. However, let's talk about training for OFS because how you train matters. Like how, how you train for a bike race matters and how you train uh, and OFS matters. So I got this email from Ryan recently uh, after talking about how I've trained other people. And actually what Ryan sent me was a conversation that he had with his OFS because he forwarded to them one of my emails. I'm going to read you the response of Ryan's OFS sent to him. She says, thank you so much for sharing this email to us, sir. Based on my seven plus months working with you, I must say that you are like John Jonas. You help me grow, sir. I basically know nothing about your business, sir, but because of you and Miss Katie's training, I was able to perform my daily job. I know I have a lot to learn, but never once have you made me feel that I'm not good enough. You appreciate and acknowledge my hard work, and because of that, I felt motivated to do more. Thank you, sir, for being a blessing to us. So Ryan had said to me, hey man, I love my OFS. She's amazing. This is working out super well. So hearing what his OFS said to him is really interesting. I'm, I'm going to look at this email again. So I'm pointing out that she said, I knew nothing, but you gave me training and you never made me feel that I wasn't good enough. That right there is a really important piece of how you train matters. So in the Philippines, they just get scared of being embarrassed. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be, they don't want to feel like you're putting them down. And if you give them feedback, something goes wrong and you give them feedback that says, hey, this is wrong and you need to correct this. What they think is, 
oh my gosh, my boss is angry with me. I didn't do it right. He's probably going to fire me. And that's like the worst case for them because once they have felt that feeling towards you, their trust in you is gone. Even if you don't fire them, they don't trust you anymore. And now they're always, they're questioning, am I going to get fired? Is he going to be mad at me? Is he going to let me, is he going to let me go? Am I going to do this wrong? And that's when, so your reaction to this situation is, is probably like, oh man, I better step it up. Their reaction is, I'm going to step it down so that I don't do anything wrong. Like if I can do the bare minimum and not have it be wrong, that's, that's how I'm going to do this. So training them and how you train them matters. And it matters because it, just giving them training up front shows them that you care. It's sufficient to show them, oh no, I do care about your success. I'm not going to fire you if you make a mistake. It lets you work with them to accomplish something so that they know, oh yeah, I can come to him with a problem. If I get it wrong, it's okay. He can help me fix it. And this is why we created VAs Made Easy. Because it, it's done for you trainings that you get to hand off to your OFS. You get to help them accomplish the tasks that we're giving them. We'll tell you exactly what they're being trained on and what you need to give them to help them accomplish it. And you don't have to create the training, but you get all the benefits of training them so that they learn to trust you. They learn, to, they learn that they're competent. They gain confidence. So there's a whole bunch of things that come from it. The trainings are super in-depth for your team, but they're also short, easy things given specifically to you so that you know what's going on. So VASMadeEasy.com, it is designed to make things easy for you to help you succeed and to help your OFS succeed and become more confident and trust you. How you train matters. 